I was told that Mr. Smith would be here in person for the plaintiff's case. What, Mr. McCray? Am I pronouncing this correctly? His, his name is McCray. It's McCray. It's not McCray. It's okay. MC it's capital C-R-E-A. I would pronounce it McCray. McCray is following you. Which I suppose is his prerogative. <laughs> what does that have to do with the arrangement you have with Mr. Curley? Because Apple no longer want, it doesn't want to cooperate. Mr. McCray is not cooperating to make this a trial about the facts and a trial about the case. Judge uh, Giles uh, flatly uh, overruled every objection that Attorney Levin had uh, posed today, and rightfully so. She said that the court is not here to be the arbiter of First Amendment, nor are they here to put a prior restraint on my trade. It's, it's, it was unfathomable what they were attempting to do. I don't think you can be cross-examining on him, this Mr. Smith, on the deal you may have made with Mr. Levin. Did you make I, a, I don't, I don't agree. Smith we had agreed that Mr. Smith would be available. We were cooperating with Mr. SDM and Mr. McCray. But certainly Mr. McCray is not cooperating to make this an orderly trial. The reason we were doing it was to make this an orderly trial. Mr. McCray is trying to try this case in the media. The events of the bombing, he's decided to leave town for a couple weeks. He will be here. That's why he will be here until next Saturday. He's at work now, but he's all of a sudden, the week of the trial, he decides to take vacation? He planned this before he'd come back to work. I had. As I said, Your Honor, I hadn't gotten in touch with him about the trial. You gotta get a subpoena on him, that's The date for this trial was supposedly cleared with all witnesses back in December. This case has been our first case out. Well, that's, I'm not gonna... Put I would get a subpoena on him. Well, they haven't disclosed, number one, his, his home address, which I would have pursued earlier if uh, we had been told that he was not gonna be here. Well, so we we will try to subpoena him at the Apple Store. Well, I guess um, this is going to depend on whether this cat case is going to be derailed. But I've got other trials on next week. Is are we saying that Mr. Hollis is going on his vacation next week? The week of this trial that's been set for your five honor. months almost. We, 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 we don't we don't want to make you a bridesmaid again, Your Honor. I, I apparently, I'm going to be because Mr. Hollis apparently I, I will, is, I is, is, is sleeping with, on vacation. I would try the case without Mr. Hollis. Before not going forward, I will say, Mr. Mr. Hollis. Mr. Hollis's testimony. Mr. Hollis had no interaction with Mr. McCray until after the data issue had happened. He is the store manager. At the end of the interaction, he came over. I and, and Mr. Levin, I don't know that. I, if Mr. Curley wants to call Mr. Hollis, fine. then you can get a subpoena out on him. Um, if I see in hand service, I'll issue a caveat if he doesn't show up. Um, I, so I usually explain to the jurors that Mr. Smith is unavailable for purposes of this trial. I'll have to say today, because apparently he's going to be made available for your case in chief. Right, and I don't, and I don't think that on the same day. Well, I don't think it. Well, I don't think it's. Oh. I don't know. Utterly really odd it's, this is going to be. It's, I, it's almost surreal. I don't think that certainly any comment should be made to the jury about him showing up for Apple's case and not showing up. He has no legal obligation to show up for Mr. Crowley's case. He doesn't live in the Commonwealth. His deposition was taken in contemplation that he might not show up at trial. Um, and do, you want to, do, what, do you want me to explain anything to the jury about this or just, you? I mean, typically what I do when we're dealing with the use of audiovisual depositions is that I explain to the jury that for reasons that you don't need to concern yourself with, this uh, witness is not a, available at trial, but you should ex assume that he or she is testifying at this trial as if he or she were a live witness. I think it's a fair game on cross-examination, quite frankly. Um, so, uh, if that's how Mr. Levin likes to proceed... Well, I, do you want I, to say anything to the fact that I, you're I just think, presenting? I think it would be appropriate for the jury to know what a deposition is, and the person is under oath, and uh, that they're required to tell the truth, the same as if they were in the witness stand. Mr. Levin, I'm, I'm going to explain it to the jury. I'm going to assume that this witness is unavailable, and my standard practice would be to explain that because this witness is unavailable, to be called by Mr. Curley, I'll put a finer point on that than I usually do, then his deposition can be used as if he were testifying live. And I have no problem with that. I don't understand why Mr. Curley should be entitled to question him about his refusal to appear here during their case in chief when he's under no legal compulsion to do so. 
he took his deposition. I think that that's creating an issue in seeking to get the jury to find a bias against Mr. Smith when there's absolutely no reason to do so. Yes, Mr. Curley, I tend to agree with that. I mean, he's not subject to your subpoena power. Just because Mr. Levin provides him, it's his what? it's his client's employee. He's still an employee, yes, right? Sure. So well, there's nothing nefarious about this. It's unusual, but it's nothing there's nothing nefarious. And if you start suggesting that to the jury, I will have to get involved and say, as a matter of right, Mr. Levin was entitled to call his client's employee voluntarily. Because he's here voluntarily. He's going to be here for Mr. Levin voluntarily. It was like December when this case was continued, and Apple request and Mr. Levin's going to be time. I was told that Mr. Smith would be here in person for the plaintiff's case. The same with Mr. Hollis. Now, we, we also have an issue, and I think it's fair game for me to say to Mr. Smith, uh, where were you all morning? Well, is, well, I don't think you can be cross-examining on him, this Mr. Smith, on um, a deal you may have made with Mr. Levin. Did you make I, a, I a, don't, a, I don't understand. Right, we had asking. agreed that Mr. Smith would be available. We were cooperating with Mr. SDM and Mr. McCrea, but certainly Mr. McCrea is not cooperating to make this an orderly trial. The reason we were doing it was to make this an orderly trial. Mr. McCrea is trying to try to say to the it was the breach of contract. There was then a long interaction between Mr. McCrea and Apple, and then there was a demand letter sent to Apple, and then there was a complaint filed against Apple, and then there was a back and forth between Mr. McCrea, or actually Mr. Curley and I. I think everything that happens after the breach of contract is irrelevant to the jury case, other than perhaps for mitigation of damages. Well, yes. certainly any you know 93A demand letter that's off limits for the hearing by the jury. But no. um, the attorney general's regulations indicate that making uh, misrepresentations that would influence somebody entering into a transaction is an unfair and deceptive act of practice. Okay. And uh, they, they made an overt misrepresentation. They didn't follow their own procedures. Then they... Okay. All of this is off limits at the trial. If you want to argue something after the jury trial is over, I'll be happy to let you do that. All you have to do is sign this form, which contains release language for any lost day. It, are you saying that the demand to sign the release is part of your breach of contract claim? I think it's part of the, the second agreement that Mr. McCray made. That yes, is it part of your breach of yes. contract claim? Yes. Mr. Levin, I can't micromanage this. That's I fine. cannot this make the these three judgments. If you think it's going over the line into the 93A, I give okay. you full permission to come over here at Sidebar, and I'll rein it in. But I've got to get a sense of how this uh, the evidence comes in. I can't make prejudgments like this. And uh, the trial is scheduled for Monday, 5th. I it's going to start off then. We'll see what happens. You know, Apple, uh, it's a very complicated case to be such a simple issue involving uh, uh, the repair and servicing of lost data. And uh, there are two issues. The jury will hear the issue on the breach of contract, but there's a 93A issue uh, on the side over here that will be heard by the bench. They waive jury on that. Uh, the, the opposing counsel, Levin, uh, had a personal issue with me. And he tried as hard as he could to say that I was biased or that I was uh, not going to report things fairly, things of that nature. But I informed him that I had come to his office and I asked him for comment. So if he had an issue with what I was writing or anything of that nature, he's free to issue a retraction, a request for retraction, and I'll honor it. And I'll put up whatever he has to say, I'll put it on the journal. And that's it. I'm out of here. Time for a ride. No. All right, you know what? I'll walk. No, no, it's not going to be that stuff. I'll walk the way. At this point, though,